this train. Ride this train. Ride this train with me to the year 1859. The place is Titusville, Pennsylvania. Hey, you see that makeshift drilling rig over there? It's not drilling for water, mister. It's drilling for oil. It was put there by Colonel Edwin L. Drake. He learned that oil could be refined in the kerosene. See, he was going to give them whale oil fellers a run for their money. A year went by and they went down 69 feet and nothing but dust. But then one Sunday, this old boy went to Drake and said, he said, hey, me and the boys are on the way to church, but I just thought I'd tell you, Colonel, that that hole we dug is seat plumb full of that old oil. Drilling, drilling. Muscle and machine, a mighty race at a devil's pace, trying to catch a dream. A rumbling sound, trembling ground, a hundred feet of pure oil reaching for the sky. And the news was out. Colonel Drake's well was producing 35 barrels of oil a day and $40 a barrel. There was a stampede to northwestern Pennsylvania to rival the California gold rush. Oil was on its way. But everybody wasn't exactly sure of what to do with this new product, oil. One old Pennsylvania farmer said, I think this is going to taste mighty good, and he poured it over his hot case. A young Ohio merchant saw a different future for oil. One gallon of kerosene sold for as much as a barrel of crude oil. Well, by 1863, this ambitious man had built over 20 refineries in his hometown of Cleveland. Uh, By the way, his name was John D. Rockefeller. Drilling, drilling, muscle and machine. A devil race at a devil's pace, trying to catch a dream. A rumbling sound, trembling ground, and a hundred feet of pure oil. Reaching for the sky. Just after the turn of the century, a new phase in oil well drilling took place. The gusher. Captain Anthony Lucas. He drilled 18 months but without success, just south of Beaumont, Texas, at a place called Spindle Top. You know, the authorities said that there could be no oil on the coastal plains of Texas. But on the morning of January 10th, 1901, the well mud was followed by gas, salt water, rocks, and finally oil. It gushed hundreds of feet toward the Texas sky. Everybody in Beaumont headed out to see the fantastic sight. One rancher got on his horse and rode hell bent for leather toward Beaumont yelling, hey, they've got a wild oil well out there and the damn thing's ruining the land. Drilling, drilling. Muscle and machine, a mighty race, a devil's pace, trying to catch a dream. A rumbling sound, trembling ground, and a hundred feet of pure oil reaching for the sky. The world never saw anything like Spindle Top. The gusher was spewing a hundred thousand barrels of oil a day. Five other gushers came in. Six wells in Texas were producing as much oil as all the other wells on earth. In one year, 440 gushers came in on the spindle top. Tiny dots on the map became legends overnight. El Dorado, Glen Pool, Ponca City, Seal Beach, and Teapot Dome. But riches and fame didn't come to everybody. There were the dry holes. Fortunes were lost drilling within a few feet of a gusher. And there was always the man-killing work to be done by the oil crews. Tool pushers, drillers, dressers, cathead men, pipe rackers, boiler men, shooters, roustabouts, and especially the roughnecks. These men were the do-anything, anytime, anywhere, drinking, cussing, fighting muscle, and the backbone of the industry, rain or shine, day or night, work and sweat. Well, I was born in a boomer's shack about a half a mile from town. My papa was a driller on a wildcat crew, and my mama never was around. Hey, I learned to cuss when I was two, to fight when I was three. 
And by the time I was five, there was no kid alive could ever get the best of me. I was born to be a roughneck. I'll never amount to nothing. Pulling case and laying pipe is hard labor. Hey, well, I started working like a regular man when I was just about knee high. Skinning my knuckles on my two bare hands, but they never heard me cry. I remember walking down the street and I'd hear somebody say, say he was born to live a rough next life and he's never gonna change his ways. Yes, I was born to be a rough neck. I'll never amount to nothing. Pulling case and laying pipe is hard labor. Probably more than any other product this land produces, oil has contributed so highly to the progress of our world. It's used in a thousand products that sometimes we take for granted, from axle grease to gasoline, pocket cones to moon rockets, medicines, plastics. And it all started with a man called Colonel Drake just 120 years ago. So, good night, Colonel Drake, and thanks for the oil. I was a court low. Every Saturday.